Now that we know how to find linear regression on the calculator, we're going to talk about a couple other things that I can do to interpret my line. The first one has to do with something called a residual. A residual basically tells me the difference between what my equation predicts and what actually happens. Okay, so it basically it's going to tell me how far off I am every time. And we get this by doing a whole bunch of subtraction. And we subtract the actual minus the predicted. The actual minus the predicted. And below, you'll see the steps for calculating the residuals. I'm just going to kind of talk about that. So we still want to just end enter our x values in list 1, our y values in list 2, we still press stat calc 4, and now we're going to store the residuals in list 3. This means we aren't actually going to have to do any of the subtraction ourselves. And we do stat 1, and that gets us over here to list 3. We need to move our cursor until the list 3 is actually highlighted. And then we press second stat. This will take me to my list function. And at the bottom of the screen, sometimes I have to scroll down, it's going to say R-E-S-I-D, resid. And that's what I want to have highlighted. And I hit enter two times. And now in list three, I'm going to have all of my residual values. And I can answer any sort of question I get about those. The other thing we want to talk about is how to interpret the equation of the line. So to show you an example, I'm going to use the first line that we calculated the residual for in the packet. And it was talking about uh, miles to the river and cancer deaths. And it was this. Y equals negative 9.27X plus 20 that number. Okay, now first, don't write on this page. This is our reference page, but I'm going to show you how we use the reference page to fill it in. So are you going to fill this in? No, but this is the structure that we will use to interpret from now on. So in this case, my x was representing the miles to river. And Y was representing the cancer deaths, or number of cancer deaths, per 100,000. Okay, so how I fill this in, on, I'm just starting right here for slope, on average as the X variable. Okay, what's my X variable? Miles to the river. So as the distance, we'll say, sorry, as the distance to the river increases by one mile, because that's my unit, right here, the, what's my y variable, cancer deaths, number of cancer deaths. And then I'm going to say either it increases or decreases. To find that, I look at my slope. My slope is negative, so I would say it decreases. Whoops, I don't have room for that, so I'm going to write it down here. Decreases by, what's my slope? 9.27, so we could say that, 9.27, and what are my units for Y? It was deaths per 100,000. So the number of cancer deaths decreases by 9.27 
deaths per 100,000. All right, all we're doing is filling in the blanks. So my x variable was talking about my distance to the river. So my distance to the river increases by one. My unit is miles. As the number of cancer deaths, that was my y variable, decreases because my slope is negative by the number of my slope and my unit for y was deaths per 100,000. If I want to interpret the y-intercept, it's when my, and my x variable, once again, is distance to the river. When my distance to the river is zero, the, what is my number of, or what is my y variable? Number of cancer deaths. The number of cancer deaths is, what's my y-intercept, 225.97 deaths, my label, deaths per 100,000. Okay, so we really are just substituting stuff. If you want to write this down, I would write it down on the actual page 150 in your notebook. Um, but let me do one more example, okay? Let's pretend I have something like um, y, woo, press the wrong button, y equals 30x plus 40, and Let's assume we're going to talk about studying. So x is going to be my number of hours that I study for the EOC. And y is going to be my score. So I start with filling my slope on average as the x variable. As my studying increases by 1, I'm going to go we said in terms of hours, the score is going to increase because my slope is positive, increases by, my number is 30, and my score is going to be in terms of points, right, so 30 points. When the x variable, which is studying, when the number of hours I studied, number of hours studied, and I'm just, I kind of reword it so that it kind of, you know, makes sense in an English sentence. When the number of hours studied is zero, the y variable, which is my score, is 40 points. So if I don't study, I'm going to get a 40. And if I study an hour, I'm going to get a 70, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, and we're going to get more practice on that tonight. I just wanted to give you a couple examples of how we use that page 150 to fill in the blanks. But once again, it's going to change with every problem, so you want to leave it blank. Don't write anything in there.